Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your majesty. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the healings. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the restoration. I glorify you. I magnify you. I adore you. I worship you. So you be all the glory. So you be all the honor. So you be all adoration. Who is like unto thee? Who is beside you? The Almighty. Father, I take over tonight, Lord. Speak through me tonight, Father. Open the eyes of our understanding. Give us clarity. Let your light shine upon us. Lighten our path, O oh Lord. Let us see. Let us hear. Let us walk in wisdom. Let your glory be. In Jesus' name. Yes. Ah, um, his presence is just too much. <laughs> it's too much. This looks like a small family, but God is just too much here, man. <laughs> it's too much, man. Ah, ah, they're all special people. He chose us, selected us. We don't have to be thousands. It's us. He has picked us. And he knitted us together as a family. Lord, we thank you. Amen. The presence of God is soaking you, Alexis. <laughs> uh, she's feeling like the wine of the spirit. So this summer today, the Lord has been teaching me, teaching me for a long time, like months, almost like a year. He's just trying to take us deeper, take me deeper, give more understanding. Because the more we know, the more we are in charge. The more we know, the more we are in charge of circumstances. Um, Understanding is the key Amen. in the kingdom. And he's the God that gives understanding. Mm -hmm. He's the God that gives wisdom. Amen. So today I'll be talking about the sevenfold spirit of God. The sevenfold spirit of God. We all know how important the Holy Spirit is. We all know how important the Spirit of God is. We all, I believe, have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, how the, the best way to get the best of your car is to understand your car better. The best way to get the best of your phone is to understand your phone better. There are some features in your phone that you don't even know how to use yet. <laughs> because you have not taken time to study. <laughs> Read the manual, including myself. So we have the Holy Spirit. 
But there is much more that we need to know about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> to fulfill destiny, to fulfill the will of God, and to subdue the earth. It is the oil in the lamp. But we need much more understanding of how it works and its manifestation. And that is why I've come, the Lord has led me to speak on. I was not sure yet, but the confirmation came in a very funny way. You know, my mind was going towards it, but I wasn't sure. I like getting confirmation before I move on. You know, we went to Chicago to visit a college and uh, and as I was entering, my wife just said, Sam, that's a religion, that's a Bible or there was a Christian bookstore. And it looks at me, she knows I like books. So go check it out while we are doing some stuff. Go check what is there. As I entered the store, the first two, three books, this third book I saw just right there, is the sevenfold spirit of God. <laughs> I'm like, I got the confirmation. It's just as simple as that. I just bought it five dollars when I left. Mm -hmm. I just, I just learned to like, it's just as simple as that. It stuck to my mind. Yes? Move ahead. That is that side. So, um, I'll be starting with the book of Revelation 4, verse 5. Amen, if, you, if possible. Revelation 4, verse 5. That we all have in the scripture as well. From the throne came flashes of lightning, the rumblings and peals, peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. These are the seven spirits of God. It's only one spirit with seven manifestations. Only one spirit, just as we have the Godhead, then we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God manifested in three forms. So one spirit manifested in seven spirits. It is deep. Now, the Holy Spirit has always been there. It's not just after Jesus came that. Uh, that we just felt the Holy Spirit just came after Jesus was living. If you look at the book of Genesis 1, verse 1 to 2, at the beginning, Genesis 1, verse 1 to 2, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the heaven was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God was as old as God himself. And this Spirit is so important. Is the engine, is the gas we put in the car. Without it, it will just be baby Christian. The goal of every student that enters college is to start from freshman to sophomore to junior high and to senior and graduate. There is more, there is the next level, there is the deeper level, there is the higher grace, there is the higher anointing. God is in finance. So we cannot just be stuck where we are at, including myself. They call it the trap of the comfort zone. Just get too comforted and find where I am. I'm making enough for that right now. But God says, why don't you come higher? There's more here. Come here. There's more. I thought I'm fine, man. I have many friends here. I'm so familiar with my family. I'm so familiar with everybody here. They don't like me. Well. <laughs> 
<laughs> but God said, I have more for you. Come over here. So we need to take a step of faith and know that there is more. I like the way Brother Lee prays most of the time. More. He was born. Luke 24, verse 49. It is so important that these guys could not even start their earthly ministry until they were impacted by that spirit. And I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Power from on high. Another translation would say, with the spirit from on high. So now let's break down the spirit. We saw in Revelation 4 5 that the seven lamps represent the seven spirits of God. Now let's look at Isaiah 11, verse 2. Now let's now start talking about the spirit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Talking about Jesus. The Spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The Spirit of counsel and of might. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. There are seven altogether. One Spirit manifesting in those seven forms. And the prayer and the goal of God is that we should be filled with the Spirit. Especially the fullness of the Spirit. Having one, two, three is not enough. Me, I have very conventions. If I have three and there's God is on his I have it's possible I have seven, I'll probably shoot for seven. I like more. And God gives us that desire you know, to seek for more. He gives us that desire to seek for more. To seek for more. So let's start from the first one. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. This spirit can also be known as the spirit of lordship or dominion. Spirit of lordship and dominion. It rests upon you. We know we have the Holy Spirit in us. But as I said, the Holy Spirit manifests itself in certain forms. It rests upon you. You see, some people could just, God could open some people's eyes and say, I want what you have on you. They see the Spirit of God on that person. They see it rests. It is a seal that God places on people. So many times we <coughs> hear from the Bible, the old, the old prophet will say, and the Spirit of God came upon them. And they did this, this, that, this, that, the other. The spirit of dominion. Luke 4, 18. Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Jesus, say this. Jesus himself. The spirit of the Lord is on me. And because of that, he has anointed him to do all of the other works. That is the seal. The spirit of God is on him. It is the manifest presence of God resting on a person. That spirit impact boldness and courage. 
like the prophet of old. You see, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, will just come on up, came upon Moses, and the Moses that was afraid to even face Pharaoh in the first place was not the one that was bold enough to meet Pharaoh. Let my people go. Challenge them. Because something took over. Something took over. The Spirit of the Lord. The next spirit is the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge. This is not the knowledge we gain by checking Matthew's textbooks. Or reading about the history of America. It's not the knowledge that we get from school or career. It is the knowledge that is imparted to us that you yourself you'll be wondering how did I come about that? How did I know that? It is given supernaturally. You just know. When the spirit is in you, you will wonder how you know some things. I'm not boasting, I got a promotion lately, and the day I was supposed to resume the main position, <laughs> that same day, God showed me a dream of another job that I've not even thought about. That same day, I told my wife, I said, I saw that I got this job again, like, whatever, whatever. Like, it looks a little like government's house, I don't understand. She said, you have not started this one and <laughs> you are talking about the other one. And that is how the Lord has been dealing with me. It is the grace of knowledge. So when you know like that, if I start this new position and I begin to feel some challenges in it and there's storm, and I, you know, there's pressure and everything. What will motivate me? What will keep me going? I've said something in front. So that gives me the confidence that what is happening now is just temporary. Because I have seen ahead of time. So then I will endure my boss's pressure. I will, it could be tough, but something just makes you hang there because you know it is temporary. You've been given the knowledge that this one you are going into, don't just go there and start building your mansion there. <laughs> don't build next there. It's just temporary. Just temporary. The spirit of knowledge. First Corinthians 2, verse 6 to 10. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6 to We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature. You know, mature. But not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So it's not uh, what we study in school. No, we declare God's wisdom. It's what a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. Then the last part there. Ten. These are the things God has revealed to us by what? By His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. 
So the Holy Spirit goes into the heart of God, checks the thought process of God, what God is thinking about us, about our situation, and he reveals that information. He just places the information on your lap. Places the information. Now, what you know, what you will do with the information is now your own responsibility. So that is why we don't stop at the place of information. Many people read Bible to just get like the story, the history. I, I love that video. That was amazing. It was more informative. Information, which is good. You know, some don't study the history or whatever. That is much more. That was the issue Jesus was always having with the religious leaders. <laughs> so you people, you are scholars, you have this your big wig and everything. You know the story from uh, Moses and all that. But Jesus said, it is the spirit, the relationship. There is more than that. That does you know the stories. Hmm? Connect with the spirit of the world, not just with the world. It is the spirit of the world that transforms. It is the spirit of the world that convicts. It is the world that gives you revelation. And you're like, wow. Now I know why. So this is who I am. And you begin to act in that revelation. And everything will not be the same again. But knowing that uh, Joseph is the father of Jesus, Jesus was there, uh, Mary wanted to, it's good to have those things, but uh, the revelation is what makes one to be in charge. So the spirit of knowledge gives the ability to know divine mysteries supernaturally. Same spirit, the spirit of God, manifested as the spirit of the Lord, which will rest upon you, manifested as the spirit of knowledge. This is where the same spirit that teases us, our focus, our example, had in full measure. When he was young, he would speak, and people would say, Give this little boy this wisdom. Where did he get it from? There was something working in him that is different. And it is available to us. Now, the third one is the spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. It is not only enough to have information, as I've said. We now need to dissect that information and understand exactly what it is. If God gives you a word of knowledge or revelation, his goal is that you try to understand it. That's why the book of it was April, Amos or something. We said, and I see a vision, and this and that. The angel will show him a vision. Then we say, what does that mean? Oh, the three lampstand, the oil, the two olive trees, the two olive trees. Say, what does that mean? What does the two olive trees? Look at he was trying to understand the information, the knowledge. By Asking questions. He was asking questions. That's so it's not just enough to just have a dream, a prophet prophesied on you, God showed you things, God gave you a thought, or God opened your eyes to see something. Sometimes God can give you a symbol form. He can talk to anybody. Through, he can talk to you through anyone. 
or you will understand them. You need to understand them. This, this spirit gives full understanding of the revealed word of God. It's been revealed. But you still have to understand. Let's look at the book of Matthew 13. Let's start from verse 11. And then the disciples were asking Jesus after he narrated the parable of uh, the farmer that was trying to sow seed. So they asked him, so they asked him a question and he replied. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to the disciples, they were asking Jesus, why do you speak a parable all the time? So, so the, the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you. But not to them. So that place is long. If you can skip to 19, I will love that. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and what, and does not understand it, you can see that's the danger there. What happens next? The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. So, they received that word. They were in church. God spoke to them. But they didn't understand it. And the devil looked Paul. Before they understand it, let me steal this. And the devil comes and steals that. But let's look at verse 23 of that same Matthew 13. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. Thank you. It's not just hearing it alone, but you get the revelation and you understand it. This is the one who what produces crop, a crop yielding 160 and more. So it is until we get to the place of understanding the revelation. That is when we can be impactful. That is when we can be fruitful. And I know the Lord will give us these gifts. He will give us the spirit. It is available and it will pass it upon us. The next one is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of the Lord rests upon you. The spirit of knowledge gives you the secret of God. It reveals mysteries to you. Then the spirit of understanding now comes and breaks it down. You know, just as God likes to do with a single word, you will try that single word, you will try to know the possible meanings. That is the spirit of understanding working there. It's trying to dissect, to look deeper. You know. Ten people might be in a classroom receiving lecture from a single teacher. But when they give them the test, you see that one gets 20%, another gets 40%, another gets 60%, another gets 80%, another gets 95%. But you might wonder, the teacher will wonder, were they not all there when I was teaching them? What happened? They all got the information from there. But the difference is as simple as that. Some people, the level of understanding differs. The level of understanding differs. So when the teacher asks a simple question, the one with the 10% understanding gives 10% answer. The one with 40% understanding gives 40% answer. The one that grabs almost everything does not define itself. It is understanding. I 
is key. That is key. Now, the spirit of wisdom. Acts 6, verse 10. Look at But they could not stand up against the wisdom. The Spirit gave him as he spoke. Wow. I think that was TV. They could not understand. They could not stand against the wisdom. This one is not in the history book. The Spirit gave him. Capital S. The Spirit of God gave him as he was speaking. This is the spirit that helps us to apply the revealed knowledge in our daily lives or ministries. As I've said earlier, we don't stop at the place of knowledge. Also, we don't stop at the place of understanding. Now you have the information, you understand the information, and what happens next? You apply the information. I remember a step I took that was wrong. When I was in Nigeria, I was processing my traveling. I saw it clearly in a dream, <laughs> of course. So, I was planning to go meet my boss for assistance. I was contemplating it. And that night the Lord showed me, I saw my boss and my colleague, they were very close, naturally. You know, she's been working there for like 20 years. So <laughs> my boss strong believe her so much. So I saw the two of them talking in the dream. And it was like somebody asked that my boss for help. And I saw my colleague there and my boss saying, you won't help her. So I saw them talking bad about that person, and then the, the two of them in the dream saying, So it was that my colleague that was convincing that my boss in the dream that don't help her, don't help whatever. That was before I even spoke to my boss. That was information then. I wouldn't say I understood it fully, but I knew what was going on. I got the information. I would say probably I didn't understand it as much as I should have. Then I moved ahead to go with my boss. I still asked her for that assistance. Of course. She looked at me like this. You know, so you are the kind of person that goes to America to study for masters. This is why you know, the way she just looked at me with content. She said no. Not only did she stop there, she couldn't imagine me leaving the workplace, going to America for my master's. It led to me losing my job early. That request, <laughs> I lost my job early. Now, see that? The Lord showed me the, the results, but I didn't understand it fully. And I did not apply the wisdom. So God was showing me already that there was there is no way there, no go. But I did not listen. I probably did not understand it. Then the Lord showed me later in the dream, I heard a voice speaking, and he said, That your boss is your helper. I heard it clearly. But somebody convinced her against you. And as I said, they you now ended the statement with, My glory will be revealed to you. That was it. He spoke it in my local language. Those things things were it. And eventually, I left the place. I, it took like four, five months, six months. But eventually, the glory was revealed. What she believed, what my boss believed that was not possible. Even to me, it wasn't possible, but it came to pass. I'm not saying this to boast, but I'm just giving you 
an instance where information is not enough. Revelation is not enough. We need to, because that could lead to a very, very, that would lead to death. God will, could reveal accident ahead for you. Like, stuff like that. And if you don't try to understand it, or just put it aside, God will die like that. And yeah, God doesn't care. God has shown you the consequence, but you never took time to understand it. And even after understanding it, you never took time to apply. So this spirit is the one that helps you to apply that revealed word of God. It helps you to apply that. Now the third one is the, the fifth, is the spirit of counsel. counsel. I call it counsel. A spirit of counsel. This one is the one that instructs. It's where it's short. You say, go this way. Don't go that way. Use this. Do this. Instruct. Since they are ahead, he wants you ahead of him. He asks you to invest in this business. He asks you to study this course. Counsel. He asks you to marry this guy. Sometimes we can call him the extraordinary strategist. Strategizes. You remember Jim Shafat when they wanted to, he was surrounded by families and he was like, Who are we? We these, these people. He consulted the Lord in the fast and the spirit of counsel came upon uh, one person like that and he said, Gather yourself together, this battle is not yours. Just do what? Bring choirs and let them sing. And the Lord will take over the rest. That was the strategy of war, which doesn't make sense. The spin of counsel. Act 8, verse 26. Act 8, verse 26. Act 8, 26. Let me see if I can read it here. Now, Philip was doing his own, he was just going, you know, enjoying his day. And an angel came and told him, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So, after he did that, eventually he saw an Ethiopian, come there, should have read that for that. But he saw an Ethiopian um, official who was in the chariot as he was going. The Ethiopian um, officer was reading the scripture. So the, Ethiopian, the guy did not understand it. So as Philip was going exactly on the road, the angel asked him to go. I said, do you understand what you are reading? And the guy said, how will I understand when there is no one to instruct me, to counsel me? And he joined his child and explained Jesus to him, what he was reading. And as they were going to there, he saw water. The guy said, and that is water. Can I just can we just stop and let me get baptized? And they stopped and Philip baptized him. He just said, join yourself to that. Go this way. Because he knows what is ahead. Somebody was reading the scripture, he didn't understand it. But the Lord sent Philip to give him understanding. Counsel. The spirit of counsel. The strategist. The program I was working on in my last uh, position, it was challenging, it was giving me some little headache. And as I was in the bathroom showering and getting ready to go to work, 
I was thinking about the program, and a light just dawned on me like, oh, why don't you move that and put it there and display, display, no, just write a code, a code and just display this. This is what you should display. You are displaying the wrong variable. You know, display this one. This is the one that is actually stored before it is incremented here. So I displayed that. As I was just in the morning, the spirit of counsel just came. And, you know, reduced the stress. Now, the next one is the spirit of might. The spirit of might. The spirit of supernatural strength. Not by Billy Moses and the Lord of Somebody that actually manifested the lot of that spirit was Samson. Judges 14, 6. This spirit empowered. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the land apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. He didn't go to the man. But he just, and we've read the Lord. There are so many scriptures about Samson. I just look it up online and we just pull the pillar, two big pillars, we pull them, destroy a big house, destroy the lion, tore it apart. The same spirit came upon David too when he was in the shepherd. And the wild animal came to attack the sheep. He tore it. Tore it. The spirit of might just comes in and makes you do something that you wonder, how did I get that strength for? Especially those called into the warrior ministry. Gives them supernatural might. Now, the last one is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, if you have all this revelation, you have wisdom, you apply it, you have might, this is the one that is like the check and balance. This is the one that, that makes you not boast to yourself. This is the one that checks you. It can also be called the spirit of reverence. You know, when you know so much about the realm of the spirit, the supernatural, you've had revelations, you can begin to think you are something. But this is the one that orchestrates some events that when you see God act, you'll be like, you are my father, but you are also my God. Like, you will respect him. You will fear him. You will reverence him. Steve and I were talking about the last two days and was telling me how a lightning and thunder you know, destroyed a tree at the lake house. And we were beginning to think about how powerful, you know, it was showing me all the records of the number of people that have been destroyed by lightning in a year worldwide, the statistics. And we begin to just imagine that weapon in the hand of God. How God is, can be scary. <laughs> mm? When you think about that, splitting a tree, bah, that, imagine that was human. Being. So when you want to say that you are this, that lightning, that lightning, it just. Come, pa! <laughs> you know that uh, you need to be humble. So, this one is the one that gives you reverence and makes you God. I am nothing beside you. Act 5, verse 11. 1 to 11. Now, a man named, we all know this story, a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Safina, 
also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. So they sold him probably $1,000, he kept uh, $300 at home and brought $700 to the apostle. Then Peter said, Ananias, which is the husband, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied for, to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? That is the spirit of knowledge working in Peter. How did he know that he kept some money at the land? The spirit of knowledge gave him that information. Did it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but what? To God. When Ananias had this, he fell down. And what? And died. <clears throat> and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Ah, six. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. Seven. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Andreas got for the land? She lied to him. Yes, she said. That is the price. Peter said to her, How could you conspire? to test the spirit of the Lord. Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door. And they will carry you out also. Wow. Then, at that moment, she fell down at his feet and died also. Then the young men came in, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. This is the last part. Great fear seized the old church and all who heard about this event. You don't see if God shows up his other side. <laughs> when it's time for worship, you will jump up and worship. When God shows up, <laughs> when he shows the one side of him. When it shows <laughs> the scary part of it, that's why they call him the consuming fire. You don't choke with fire. You don't choke with fire. Yeah. So when he shows you this part of it, then Jesus is love. Jesus is love. <laughs> Sword. <laughs> you will sit tight. And when it's time to worship, you will stand up. Except if you don't feel like you're not healthy. Yeah? You will kneel, you will bow. When the king comes in, I bet everybody will stand up. When the king, earthly king, you will stand up and, you know, reverence. When the consuming fire is here, he sits. The one that can remove that king and put another person there. So, this is the one that checks. But how great the prophet is. The prophet knows this side of God. And when he's, he's beginning to misbehave, you're like, ah, God. You see, David will start rolling on the floor. God has blessed all. To that done it. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Stop. Thank you. But he doesn't even want us to be like that. He wants us to be like a child, treating you like a father. You know, sit on his lap, kiss him. But this part is also very important. Very, very important. 
the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in steadfast love. He is slow to anger. But when that anger comes, ah, it comes on the fire. So we don't want him to get there. We don't want him to get there. The goal is the fullness of the spirit. One person might have the part of the spirit manifesting more, and the other not as much. But our goal is to manifest the fullness of God. That is getting to the level of spiritual maturity. Maturity. If you have four functioning as of seven, then there are still three more to grow in. Myself included. Now let's look at Ephesians 3.19. We're almost done. And to know this love that it was uh, Paul praying here. He was praying for the for the people. For the, uh, the officials here. And to know this love that surpassed knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. He's praying for them that they should be filled to the measure of what all the food. Why would he pray that if that is not possible? Not possible for the measure of the fullness of God. Why would you pray that? That the efficiency should express that. It looks like it's not attainable, but with his grace, hunger, our desire, converting the grace of the Spirit. So when the seven spirits are fully at work in us, we will be too dangerous for the kingdom of Satan. When it's planning that the Lord would have revealed it to us, we would have seen the knowledge. After seeing the knowledge, you understand it. Oh, this is where they're coming from. After that, you apply that knowledge, you say, okay, let us take this out. That is wisdom. And people say that, ah, that guy is so wise. The secret of where I am today is self Sometimes I'll just sit down and I'll just analyze my life. And I'm like, what brought me this far? Then it has always been one single answer. God and the revelation. I value the reward of God. I, and I value the revelation of God. I value, I honor it when I see one. I keep it here. I don't write it down. I keep it, I keep them here. For me, I can pull out like 20 or more revelations that God has shown me. I don't just keep them here, I apply them to my daily life. When situations are not going the way I expect. I remind myself of some of the things I have here. That was one I can I remember my I remind myself all the time. It was in the local language. It says, "Don't you know you have power and authority?" It's just that simple statement. Don't you know you have power and authority? That I can. I, Whenever I start feeling, I just remember that. It speaks, it just to remind me of who I am. That's information there. I understand it. Then I 
and this is not applied in the time of battle. When the enemy brings his roaring head. Yeah. Now you might say, okay, okay, we are called to increase in the manifestation of the Spirit of God. So we are telling the fullness of God. The last scripture, Luke 2 52. We are called to increase. You know when Jesus was going up, said, and Jesus grew in what? Wisdom and stature and in favor with God and in man. That means he increased. He increased in wisdom. Jesus read books. Jesus was answering them one time. He said, Have you not read? That was how it started. Have you not read? In this, he was answering those hours that were challenging them. That means he himself has, he has read it. Have you not read? A reader is a reader. Have you not read? We are to increase in the manifestation of the Spirit of God. My goal is not just to give you information. My goal is that God should impart his Spirit upon us. And cause us to grow mightily, and cause the spirit, the sevenfold spirit of God, to begin to manifest in our daily lives, so that we can accomplish things beyond imagination. So the, the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. The world is waiting for us to manifest the glory of God. When there is proof, you don't have to talk too much to convince anybody. Yeah. When they see proofs in your life that what you believe in is working for you, Amen. evangelism will be easier. Yeah. They will come and say, we wonder your God. Whatever is working for you, I want it. Because you have proofs. And God is a God of proofs. And the fullness of the Spirit we have. We have. Including myself. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. Father, I pray as we have heard your words, Lady Father. We don't just want to be informed. We want to be transformed. We want to be renewed. We want to be impacted by the abundance of your spirit. Let your spirit begin to increase in our lives, Lord. Impart us with the fear of the Lord. Impart us with the spirit of knowledge. Impart us with the spirit of wisdom. <coughs> Impart us with the spirit of understanding. Impart us with the counsel of God. Impart us with the spirit of the Lord. Impart us with the spirit of might that we may fulfill our destiny. That your kingdom may come. That we may reveal you to the world. 